If you're looking to start printing your own photos, then this is the video for you. Welcome back to the channel, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at how I print my images. So I think the first thing that we need to look at is why should you print your own images? And you know, there's a few things we need to consider here. You know, we kind of live in a very digital world and there's some textural and aesthetic qualities of printing your own work on a piece of high quality paper and, and looking at it however you choose to, whether it be just by holding the paper in your hand or in a frame or even in a book perhaps. And it just brings the images to life. Now, there's a sense of achievement by seeing your work hanging on your wall or perhaps on somebody else's wall because you've given it to them as a gift. And the other thing to consider why you should print your own images is because you learn from the process of doing it. You know, before I started printing my own work, I didn't really understand what a distraction in your image is. But when you actually print your images, they really stand out and it makes you think about how you remove objects from your frame, either when you're doing your compositions or during post-processing. And the last thing to consider as to why you should print your own images is because having your own work or even somebody else's work for that matter hanging up on your wall should give you inspiration to go out and shoot more and create more work that you can put up on your other walls or give gifts to other people or sell through your website. So I think all around the reasons for why you should print your own work there are some real tangible benefits that you, you should consider. So this image was scanned by myself using my Epson V800 scanner and if you'd like to learn how to scan your own film then I have plenty of videos in my channel and whether you want to scan colour slide film, black and white film or colour negative film there's tutorials there and I will leave a link to those videos in the description section down below. So the image we're going to be printing today is this one here and if you'd like to watch the vlog where I was out in the field with my Mamiya 7 camera shooting this image then I'll also leave a link in the description section down below where you can go and watch that video. So to get started printing your own images you're going to need some equipment and software and the first thing you're going to need is a printer. Now the printer I would recommend that you look at is a semi-professional inkjet printer with a very good colour range for the cartridges. Now my printer of choice was a Canon Pixmar Pro 1 and that printer has 12 ink cartridges. Now when you're looking for a printer if you don't already own one, I recommend that you buy a used one. I bought mine locally here in New Zealand through a, a website called TradeMe, which is New Zealand's version of eBay. The guy lived relatively local to me and I was able to go around to his house, I was able to look at the printer and he also did a test print for me. So the second thing you're going to need is a computer screen. Now my screen of choice is the iMac 27 inch 5K. I've had that for a while, it's the original version. So when it comes to computer screens, it's important to just kind of consider what type of paper you're going to print on. Now, when I started printing, I already owned my iMac, so I wasn't really sure. And I actually went through a process of selecting paper, and we'll get to that soon. And the paper of choice that I actually print on is a semi-gloss. Now, when it comes to printing semi-gloss on matte paper, and you're comparing it to a glossy screen like the iMac 5K, or any other iMac for that matter, it doesn't look quite right because you've got obviously a very glossy computer screen and a not so glossy image. So depending on what sort of paper you're going to be printing on, it's worth considering the surface finish of your screen. Now I ended up buying an anti-glare matte cover that just kind of sticks on top of my screen and for that I'll leave a link in the description section down below. And you may not need that if you are wanting to print on kind of really glossy paper then you probably won't need that matte screen cover but if you're going to be printing on semi-gloss or matte you probably will need it. So the third thing you're going to need is a colour calibration device for your computer screen. Now my calibration device of choice is an X-Rite Colour Monkey and I'll leave a link in the description section down below to where you can look at that if you want to and that's important to get because it will colour calibrate your screen to an RGB colour. So that's really important to consider because if you don't colour calibrate your screen and when you actually come to print your own work, the results, the printed results can look, if you're not careful, very different to what's on your screen. So having a colour calibrated screen removes any chance of them not matching up. And the final thing you're going to need is some software. 
Now my software of choice is either Lightroom or Photoshop. I print most of my work directly from Lightroom using the plugin for the Canon PixMar Pro 1 printer that I have. You are able to print from Photoshop. You're also able to print from other editing tools like for example Capture One and you can also print directly from the plugin tool for the printer. So once you've got yourself a printer and you've got some software to start printing you're going to need some paper to print on. Now there's there's so many choices out there and what I ended up doing I ended up contacting a company out of the UK called Photospeed and they were very kind to help with samples of paper. I had to pay for the postage to get you know to here to New Zealand from the UK which was fine I was more than happy to do that. And they sent me two or three uh, samples of each type of paper and I basically just printed images and just kind of work, work through and just kind of figured out what I liked. And they just basically came in these little wallets like this, this is a photo speed one. And I also purchased some Hinemule paper like this one. So as you can see I've got several different sample packs here and that was really helpful of photo speed to provide them because it enabled me to pick the paper that I really wanted. So once you've selected your paper, the next thing you need to do is get the ICU profile for the specific paper that you want to print on. Now every paper, every different type of paper from every different type of manufacturer has a custom ICU for the paper. And basically you go to the manufacturer's website, to the ICU profile section on their website, and you basically find the paper that you want to print on and you download the ICU for that paper. Then once you get into Photoshop and you actually go to print, you basically load the ICU profile and that corrects the colours in the image for the paper that you're going to use. Now I'll show you that once we get started in Lightroom and do some printing. So once I'd been through the process of printing samples on different types of papers, you have to come to choosing the paper that you want to work with. Now I wanted to pick a paper that I would use for most of my images and ended up picking two. And the paper that I ended up picking was a Hanimule paper and there's two versions of the Hanimule paper that I really liked. And the first one is a Fine Art Pearl and it is a cotton type paper. It's very, very high quality and it's a 285 GSM. And Hanimule makes great paper, highly recommend this paper, but it does come at a price, but the results are worth it. So this Fine Art Pearl is the paper that I use for printing any kind of family type shots that I put up on the walls and I really like this paper for that. For my landscape photography work, I chose this paper, which is an A3 Plus, which works in my printer. And this is a Fine Art Burrito Satin. And this is also a cotton rag paper. It's very high quality. It's 300 GSM, so it's very thick. It's got a nice weight to it. And the results are just perfect, the beautiful results and highly recommend this paper. And again, what I'll do, I'll leave links in the description section down below to where you can check out this paper if you wanna do so. So once you've got some equipment and software to print and you've selected the paper that you like and you've got your custom ICU profiles, the next thing you need to do is you need to calibrate your screen and you should do this ideally before you start printing for the first time and ideally every two or three weeks after that because the calibration of your screen will go out a little bit. Once you've calibrated your screen, you then need to adjust the brightness setting of your screen. Now I would reduce mine well below half the setting for the iMac. Um, that's generally where I start off. Once I've actually printed my image, I then compare my image to my computer screen and I then further adjust the brightness setting of my screen. And once I've done that, I generally leave that setting alone until the next time I calibrate my screen. So in a second we're going to take a look at how we actually print in Lightroom but before we do that we need to consider how are we going to view these images and for me and the images that I recently printed I have some frames and this is one of them this is an A A4 frame and as you can see it's got a matte board in here and you need to consider the size so this is an A4 frame size so an A4 sheet will slot straight in, in there but the window won't necessarily be A4 size by the time you've put a matte board in. So you need to think about the size of your image compared to the matte board that you're potentially going to use if you're going to use one and also the frame size. For the print we're going to print today, it's going in a much bigger frame obviously because it's A3. And this is the frame. As you can see, it's quite big. And the image that we're actually going to print is much smaller than this. So but again, we need to think about the size of the image versus the matte board that we're going to have in here in relation to the frame itself. 
So it's worth measuring up your frames and considering the matte bore size before you actually print your images. So coming up in a future video, I'm actually going to be framing this image. So if you're keen to start learning how to frame your images, then please subscribe to my channel by pressing the red button down here below somewhere and you'll be notified when that video comes out. So now we're going to jump into my computer and get into the Lightroom and start prepping my image to print. So this is the image we're going to be printing today. I have this open up in Lightroom Classic in the develop module. So assuming that you've tweaked your images and you've got it to the point where you're happy to consider start printing them, the first thing you want to do is check your white point and black point. Now there's a couple of ways you can do this. As you can see the background of this image, it's white, you can change it to medium grey. And I would go through and change it between white, medium grey and black. And when I've got it in the black setting, I will be checking the very dark points of my image just to make sure how dark they actually are. And what you might find at this point is that you can actually push them a little bit darker if you want to. And the same with white. So once you have the white background open, you can actually use it as a reference point to determine what is actually pure white. And what you might find is that you can actually increase the white point in your images even further. And this will give you much more contrast and dynamic range in your print. So the second way to check your whites and your blacks is to go over to the basic section in the develop module. At the bottom you've seen you've got your whites and your blacks. So if we go on blacks for example and we move that over further to the left you'll start to see that there's a warning that appears on the screen. And if you take it off you'll see that the image kind of looks really crushed now so you'd want to move that back or you'd, you just wouldn't want to go that far. And it works the same way for the whites. So the next thing we want to do is head over to soft proofing. And you'll see here in the develop module down at the bottom here we just click on soft proofing. This is quite a useful tool because here we're able to kind of visualize how the image will look on the paper that we're going to print it on and also we can check for any out of spec colors for the paper that we'll be using. So what I mean by that is if we go up here to the top you can see here we can apply our profile. So this is where we apply the ICU profile for the paper. And what, and what we're able to do here is we're able to check that there are no outer spec colors in this image before we go to print. And that's quite important to consider. So if, we just, if I just show you what I mean for a second with that, and you can see here at the top in the corner, there's a paper icon that's selected. Now, as you can see here, I've already changed some of the colors, but if I move the purple up, and as you can see, there's a mass of red that appears on the screen. And what that actually means is that for this image, as it's currently edited, printing it on my printer, on the paper that we're going to use, there's colours within that scene that will not print the same way it appears on the screen. So if we go ahead and undo that because we don't want that in our image, and what we can also do here is we can simulate the paper and the ink. And that just gives us an idea of how the image will look finally. So assuming you've tweaked your colours and you've got your contrast the way you want it and you've done your whites and your blacks and anything else that you want to do in the develop module, we then go over to the print module. So once we're in the print module, we then go over to page setup and we set the page up for the paper that we're going to be printing on. You select the printer, you then go and select the type of paper and there's different choices here. I select borderless and you click OK. And obviously the paper size will change, but you can see the image is far too small. So at this point we go over to the right, and this is where all the settings are, and we look at the layout, and we look at the cell size, and we just bring that up. And we move those, and we move those grids that were there previously hanging over, and we just increase that, and there we go, the image is looking a lot bigger. So at this point then we want to look at guidelines, and we want to take a look at these measurements. So... This is where the measurements come into play that you've just done to determine the size of the image in relation to your map board and the frame. So you'd want to adjust the margins on that basis. And we're just going to pick some numbers here randomly, assuming that these are the numbers that we actually need. And then we can just go ahead and check these numbers. And if we need to tweak them, because we want the width of the image to be 25 centimeters, then we would just tweak these settings here until the image was the right size. So we can turn the guides off now. And then when we go down here, we select printer and print resolution. I have mine set to 360 pixels per inch. Print sharpening, I leave that to standard. 
and the type of print that we're using is glossy. I have 16 bit output set up and then here is where the ICU profile comes into play. So you would click here and you would select the ICU profile that's suitable for the paper that you're going to use. And it's very important that you get that right. So once we have these print settings set up, we then need to apply some more print settings to the printer we're actually using. And we do that by clicking print settings down here in the bottom left. Now this will open up a new module and as you can see my printer is selected and when we click this drop down menu there's a number of settings that we're able to go through and adjust. Now there's only two things that I change in here. The first thing is I just make sure that colour sync is selected. I do not want the colour profile from the printer being applied. I want the colour profile from Lightroom being applied. And the next thing I would change is quality and media. So here we change these settings based on the information that's provided by the paper manufacturer and it comes with the ICU profile that we download. So you basically just go through and make sure these settings match the ICU profile that you're using. So these are all the settings that I would change in this module. We can then go ahead and click save or this time I'm going to click cancel because it's already set up for my printer. So once we've done that, we can then go ahead and click print down here in the bottom right and that will start the printer going. So for me, there's something really magical about watching my printer print my images. You know, if you watch the video of me making this image and you kind of look at the effort that you would go through to capture that image in the first place and then you go ahead and print that image, it's, it's a beautiful thing and it's to actually see it come out of the printer and then you get it in your hands and you start looking at it and you look at the, the textural qualities of the paper and how your image has been rendered on that paper and then you look at your image in different lighting conditions and you compare it to the image on your screen and it, it just brings the image to life and there's nothing better in my mind and printing your own work and then displaying it for other people to look at. So when you come to view your printed image for the first time, you need to consider the lighting conditions in the room where you're looking at it. Ideally, you want the light bulbs in that room to be as neutral as possible. You don't want a warm light. You want a very cool, neutral light as, as, as cool and neutral as possible. And you don't, want direct light, you want ambient light and that will give you the best viewing results for that image for the first time and when you're comparing it to the computer screen with the image on it. If the image looks a little bit duller than what you're looking at on your screen then at this point you should go ahead and compare it against your screen and then also fine tune the brightness setting of your screen and I think once you find that you've done that your screen brightness will be set up for future prints as well. So now you have all the information you need to start printing your own images and I encourage you to do so. It will only add value to your photography and it is a very rewarding process. So that brings us towards the end of today's video. In terms of future videos I've got coming out, I recently did a vlog trip to a beach in New Zealand called Piha, which is on the west coast. It's a very rugged and wild beach and I took my Hasselblad camera there, which is a square format film camera. And there's a video coming out on that next week. So please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and then you'll be notified when that video comes out. So that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye for now.